just one more morning I got to wake up with the blue Get myself together Put on a walking shoe Go up on the mountain See what I could see The whole world is falling down Right down in front of me Cause I'm hung up on dreams Just one more morning I gotta wake up with the news I'm down off the mountain, baby Put on my walking shoe Cause I've got dreams To remember I've got dreams So that's it. Uh, uh, that was basically it. It's it's kind of a scatterbrain song. I think I think uh, I think Buddy was trying to write a song and he didn't really know how. He came up with kind of a good groove and those that bridgey whatever it is is funny. But what's interesting uh, to me and what I notice is that he's he's talking about. Just one more, one more morning, I had to wake up with the blues, put on my walking shoes, and then he goes to the mountain to see what he can see, and then he says he's got dreams to remember. Dream, and, that's, and he goes out doing that. I got dreams to remember. So, dreams to remember, well, that's old as Redding, see? And I've, I've learned since then that Buddy Miles loved uh, Otis Redding, see, and and I, it makes me think of the time that I went to see uh, the Jimi Hendrix experience at the Avalon Ballroom in uh, San Francisco, and uh, uh, I was up pretty close, right in the middle, on the floor, smashed in with a <coughs> bunch of other hippies, and... Uh, and the Buddy Miles Express opened, and uh, Buddy liked to sing, and, and he, I guess he had somebody else drummer, or maybe he was in, introducing the song or something, but I remember, I remember he was, he was sort of pacing back and forth, uh, uh, holding the mic, and, uh, and he was going, I think, yeah, he used to do, he used to do a couple of Otis Redding songs, um, yeah, wrap it up. Oh no, that was Sam and Dave. Well, he he did wrap it up too. But anyway, um, I remember um, Otis. Well, I, I don't remember. I mean, I didn't know at the time that Otis. Red, I didn't know who Otis Redding was at the time. Otis Redding died right when he crossed over. He got he got killed in a plane crash right when uh, he had his biggest hit. His uh, he died and his biggest hit was released. So, uh, which was sitting on the dock of the bay. So there was this huge hit for Otis Redding, the guy who died two weeks ago, you know. And I didn't know uh, who Otis Redding was. And, and I remember uh, Buddy Miles was sort of pacing back and forth and shaking his head and talking to the mic. And he's, he's going, yeah, Otis, Otis, Otis. And I was like, who's Otis? Otis who? And then Dreams to Remember, which is a which is a huge it's a big it's a, you know it's a, it's a well known if you know Otis Redding you know the song Dreams to Remember. I've got dreams. That one.
Okay? Okay. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome some. Walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we'll walk. against modern death unless they try to play it too darn fast change the beauty of the melody till it sounds just like a symphony that's why I go for that rock and roll music any old way you choose it got a backbeat you can't lose it any old time 
time you use it. You gotta be rock or music if you wanna dance with me. I got no intention. I took my lover down across the track so she could hear a little wailing sax. Mr. Smith they had a rocking band. Then we're going like a hurricane. Started playing that rock and roll music. Any old way you choose it. Got a back beat, you can't lose it. Any old time you use it. Gotta be rock and roll music if you wanna dance with me. Way down south they gave a jubilee. Folks and had a tambourine. They were drinking from a wooden cup. Folks dancing got all sugar. Start playing that rock and roll music. Any old way you choose it. Got a back beat, you can't lose it. Any old time you use it. Gotta be rock and roll music if you wanna dance with me. Don't care to hear him play the tango I'm in no mood to dig the mambo Way too early for the Congo Start playing that piano So I can hear some of that rock and roll music Any old way you choose it Got a back beat, you can't lose it Any old time to use it Gotta be rock and roll music if you wanna dance with me, if you wanna dance out with me. Yep, I've been to France. I was there with a guitar player. Really good guitar player, but he was, guitar was all he cared, you know, he was like a guitar player. That, that kind of, that was the four corners <laughs> of that guy. <laughs> and it was my, it was our, both, it was, it was both of our first, it was the first time for both of us uh, over, uh, overseas. Well, I'd been to Hawaii when I was uh, surfing as a boy, but yeah, I had never been overseas. It was my first time. And, and we were. We were kind of in a holding pattern to land at Heathrow or something, and, and we were banking, and we were and we were turning, and and he had the window and I was I had the middle, and we were looking down the wing at the Houses of Parliament, and I was just so thrilled, you know, because I loved uh, I grew I loved uh, literature, you know I, I loved all that. Uh, Stuff and I and I said I said look at that man, just imagine all the stuff you know I said uh, Shakespeare, you know Shelley, Wren, Newton. I started rattling off all this and he goes Clapton. <laughs> yeah, Clapton, Clapton too. Yep. This old town. Filled with sin, it'll swallow you in if you got some money to burn. Take it home right away. You got three years to pay, but Satan is waiting his turn. This old earthquake's gonna leave me in the poorhouse It seems like this whole town's insane On the 31st floor A gold-plated door Won't keep out the Lord's burning rain The scientists say It'll all wash away, but we don't believe anymore. Cause we got our recruits 
And that green mohair suit So please show your ID at the door This old earthquake's gonna leave me in the poorhouse It seems like this whole town's insane on the 31st floor, gold-plated door won't keep out the Lord's burning rain. A fr uh, friend came around, he tried to clean up this town, his ideas made some people mad, he trusted his crowd, so he spoke right out loud, and they lost the best friend they had, this old earthquake's gonna leave me in the poorhouse, it seemed like this whole town's insane On the 31st floor gold plate door Won't keep out the Lord's burning rain On the 31st floor gold plate door Won't keep out the Lord's burning rain That's a story. Things got really weird for him after he died. It's uh, kind of gone into the into lore now. Graham, Graham Parsons, who wrote that song, I believe he wrote it. His body was stolen by some some nuts on a mission, and they they took they took his uh, his coffin to. Uh, What's it called Jasper Tree? Jasper, that 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 all those crazy trees and rocks around Palm Springs, someplace. J Jericho Tree, Jeremy Tree, Jericho Tree, Jasper Tree Park, and uh, set it on fire. They had to do. Uh, they had to, they had to perform some ceremony out there that was important to them. Weird, huh? California. Sometimes I think they seems like they tilted the country on its on one end, and all the nuts and bolts rolled into California. So they sure seemed in the '60s. Now there's loose nuts and bolts are uh, Joshua, Joshua tree. Yeah, thanks, Denny. Uh, the, now the, all the, all the loose nuts and bolts are sheltering in place. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> not, not just California. Whew. Whew boy. Yeah, Joshua Tree. I, w I went there. It's nice there. Kind of spooky.
Just run off with my car Gone back to her ma and pa Telling tales of drunkenness and cruelty Now I'm sitting here Sipping at my ice cold beer Lazing on a sunny Cause I love to live so pleasantly Live this life of luxury Lazing on a sunny Tear that up on on this part. I don't know. They could go. They could do all kinds of stuff there, man. That'd be that'd be far out. Give it to somebody like uh, some jazzy cats. You know, one thing that's different is uh, another thing I just noticed is different is I I I used to get there used to be a little notice if somebody would enter. You know, if somebody signed on is they'd say uh you know denny stover just joined i bet if you just joined you know and i'd go oh hey uh, uh, you know i'm not if you don't if you don't say anything uh, there it's not doing that now for me anyway so if you don't say anything i don't know you're there which i think is i think that's probably better kind of cool because uh, sometimes i've hesitated to Check somebody out because I don't want, I don't want my presence announced. John Troy's here. You know, wait a second. You know, I I I, I would just like to stick my head in the door and check it out without this big announcement. You know what I mean? And now John Troy. You know, I, I, that's not what I'm going for. If I'm just sticking my head in the in the in the club just to see how the band sounds. <laughs> Bonzu and they all lacks for you. They all lacks for you. Yeah, they even inquired about you. Went on over to the Audubon Zoo and they all lacks for you. The monkey asked, the tiger asked, and the elephant asked me to. Boom, boom. I went on down to the deep blue sea and it all lacks for you. All lacks for you. Yeah, they even inquired about you. I went on down to the deep blue sea and it all lacks for you. The dolphin at uh, the tuna asked, and the octopus asked me to bump, 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 but it a bump, 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 but it a bump, bump, bump. I went on up 
to the great big sky And they all lacked for you They all lacked for you Yeah, they even inquired about you Went on up to the great big sky And they all lacked for you Eagle at the robin ask And the pelican asked me to Hey, they all They all lacked for you. Everybody there wanna know where, yeah, they all lacked for you. Hey, they all lacked for you in the morning. I all lacked for you. Everybody there wanna know where, yeah, they all lacked for you. Any 
where it's alright I don't need the sun to shine Rainy sky, it still feels fine When I walk on with you When I walk on with you When I walk on with you When I walk with you Well, Burn, sorry, he calls himself Burn now, I guess. Burn Labello wrote that. I did a... I did a, a, a local TV commercial in Boston for the uh, a, a local sportscaster. And uh, it was at a casting agency in, uh, in Cambridge with a two-name... a two-name name... Uh, these two women who, who ran it, and I went in for the audition, and the part was, there was this band, a ba it was all, the, all this editing that you see in, in, in commercials, this fast editing, we like Mike, it was, we like Mike, it was Mike somebody, this, this sports, sportscaster in Boston, uh, and uh, the band was going to be playing throughout the uh, the the commercial, you'd be editing to it. And we'd be in this situation. There we were uh, on top of the dugout at Fenway, and then there we were uh, on the parquet and at uh, Boston Garden. Then there we were over here, you know, and and we're we're all those different locations for like five seconds apiece, making like we're playing this song, pretending to play this song. And and everybody who was auditioning uh, were actors. They were actors, and they were auditioning to act as if they were musicians. And I auditioned for the part of the bass player. And I said, if I don't get this, it, it is, you know, that ain't good. Because I am a bass player. <laughs> so I was sitting there in a the, the waiting room, and who walked in to audition also? But Ben Orr. Ben Orr walked in. And, uh, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this in any kind of boastful way I'm not I'm just saying what happened he walked in <laughs> he went with this look on his face like he knew, I was in the bag <laughs> I'm Ben Orr you know he walked in he was like yeah <laughs> and he looked around the room and he saw me I was sitting there looking at him he saw me and his face went <laughs> his face just dropped <laughs> oh. <laughs> I went I thought Hey, he knows me. He knows who I am because I we didn't we didn't know each other. But I guess he I guess he knew who I was because <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't happy to see me. <coughs> I got the gig, by the way. I beat out Ben Orr. That was a sweet song he wrote. That uh, I gotta say, I didn't like it when it first came out. Well, I didn't like I didn't like the cars because they were they were competition. You know, and it, it pissed me off because they zoomed right by. I like, what about us? And there they go. And and who it didn't matter if if they were good or not, uh, I I just resented it and it pissed me off when 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 somebody uh, flew flew by us and and kicked our asses in terms of success. Mike Lynch, that's right. We like Mike, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So I was so I thought that song sucks. You know who's gonna take you home tonight? Ah, and then uh, and then. And then he got sick, and he died. Oh, gee, I, and I felt kind of bad about not liking his music and everything. And then, you know, years later, years later, that song came on the radio, and I was listening to it, and I thought, you know, that's a sweet song. It's a beautiful song. And the Cars were a great band, a great band. See, I don't feel threatened anymore, so I can, I can like them. So don't, just don't threaten me, and, I'll, and I will like you. See? Logic. As I was going over the far famed Cary Mountains, I met with Captain Farrell and his money he was counting. I first produced my pistol and then produced my rapier. <coughs> said, <coughs> that's what I said, 
said, stand and deliver, for he were the bold deceiver, mushering dum a doo dum a da. Quack for the daddy o, quack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. I counted out his money, and it made a pretty penny. I put it in me pocket, and I took it home to Jenny. She sighed and she swore that she never would deceive me. But the devil take the women, for they never can be easy. Musha ring dum a doo dum a da. Back for the daddy o, back for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. I went up to my chamber, all for to take a slumber. I dreamt of golden jewels, and for sure, twas no wonder. But Jenny blew me charges, and she filled them up with water. Then sent for Captain Farrell to be ready for the slaughter. Musha ring dum a doo dum a da. Whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. Twas early in the morning, just before I rose to travel. Up comes a band of footmen, and likewise Captain Farrell. I first produced me pistol, for she stole away me rapier. I couldn't shoot the water, so a prisoner I was taken. Musha ring dum a doo dum a da. Whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. There's some take delight in the carriages a-rollin', and others take delight in the hurlin' and the bowlin'. But I take delight in the juice of the barley, and courtin' pretty fair maids in the mornin', bright and early. Musha ring dum a doo dum a da. Whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. If anyone can aid me, tis me brother in the army. If I can find his station in Cork or in Killarney, and if he'll go with me, we'll go roving through Kilkenny, and I'm sure he'll treat me better than my own sportin' Jenny. Musha ring dum a doo dum a da. Back for the daddy o, back for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. Musha ring dum a doo dum a da. Back for the daddy o, back for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. Yeah, I was sitting there uh, uh, when we were when we were shooting in Fenway. I was the only actual musician. Well, it doesn't matter to the story, uh, but I, I was the only actual musician in the in the band, and uh, the rest were local actors. And I was sitting with one of them. And uh, there was going to be a, a game that night in Fenway. And the, the, the green jackets were going around and uh, pre preparing all the seats and making sure everything was nice. And uh, everything was getting set up. And uh, the, the guy, the, there was a crew out there putting the lines on, nice uh, new clean uh, lines of lime on the, on the grass. And we were we were sitting right, uh, and, and there was a lot of waiting when you do a shoot, when you do a shoot, see, because <laughs> I know this kind of thing. Uh, but they were setting up a new shot, so we're we're just sitting there waiting, and uh, and a couple of players from the we were sitting, we were sitting right behind the visitors dugout, along the third baseline there, and uh, uh, hey, go ahead and do, do a shot, Rick. Go ahead and do a shot. Uh, who's oh, uh, Okasik wrote that, Michael. Oh, I thought I thought Ben Orr wrote it. Well, he did a great job singing it. He did a great job. His his voice had a a real, a real uh, sweetness and and vulnerability to it. You know, I I appreciate it now. Ah, that's uh, see, I know that. See, my my audience is is patient and knowledgeable. And I would never pander to people as great as you. Uh, who's going to drive you home? Yeah, uh, Okasik wrote it. Well, what do you know about that? Huh. Anyway, thanks, Michael, for clearing that up. So uh, we were sitting there behind the, the visitor's dugout when 
a couple of, of the visiting team's players came out, emerged onto the field right in, right in front of us. And I don't, I don't know who they were. I, I didn't really follow baseball. I don't know what team it was or who they were. But they were, uh, even then, I mean, I was, I was in my, at that time, I was, let's see, I was in my 40s at the time, early 40s maybe, and they already, already at that age, they looked like kids. They're these major league baseball players, they looked like kids to me. You know, well, they were, they were 20 years younger than me. They probably were in their early 20s. A couple of ball players, a couple of boys to my eye, young men. Anyway, they came out and they turned around and they saw, they saw the camera activity and they asked, they asked us, me and the guy. And they said, what's going on? I said, well, we're shooting a, we're shooting a commercial, you know, for a sportscaster. And, uh, yeah, uh, it, Ben made it his own, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh, and, uh. And they went, oh, okay. And it turns out they were a couple of outfielders. And they set up, what one guy set up kind of right in front of us, just, just inside of, uh, just, just inside toward the plate uh, from, uh, 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 from third base, like about 10 feet toward the plate uh, from third base, not stepping on the line. He was outside the foul line. And, uh, and the other guy set up about 20 feet away, and they... they Started tossing the ball back and forth, just little, little tosses like that, you know, just back and forth, back and forth. And every few tosses, the guy on our left, with his back to the green giant, he would step, take one little step back. Uh, um, he would take one step back, and and the guy I was sitting with next to was talking to me. He was telling me some story or something, but he was talking to me and looking to me, and I was listening. And I was going, uh. -uh. Uh huh. And I was watching these guys get get farther and farther apart, and the ball never seemed. It never started to get some project. It, it kept on going like that, and it was just incremental. But he started to get. He started to get kind of. You know, now he's about as far away as as uh, as about sixty. You know, uh, like home plate to uh, to the, to the mound, and uh, about that far away. And these guys still had that same easy motion. Same easy motion. looked like looked like their arms were moving slowly, you know, and and the balls were whew, zzz, you know, and uh, and they kept getting farther and farther apart until I started to, I started to be alarmed because the the guy was out there, he was out there toward the wall, and these guys were still had that same easy motion, and the ball was humming, humming. Uh, I couldn't, I started to, started to blow my mind. You know, when you see somebody doing something that anybody can do, like throw a ball. Who can't throw a ball? Anybody can throw a ball. But when you, but when you see somebody throw a ball like, like better than anybody can, it gets, you, it gets your attention. Well, it got my attention. And I, <laughs> I said to the guy, I, the guy's going, wait, I said to the guy, wait a second, look, look. And he looked, he goes, what? <laughs> I said, watch, just watch. And the ball went back and forth. A few times, and the guy goes, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah, man. They make and here, the thing about it is they make it look easy. That's the thing. They make it look easy, you know. So I have no patience for these fans. Who go, ah, oh, he should have caught. He should have, you know. Shut up. You try it, man. Oh man, these guys are doing something I could never do. And I'm, you know, I, I'm, I was no daisy. I could throw a ball. I could throw a ball. But not like these guys, major the big leagues, man. <laughs>
first mate, he got drunk, broke in the captain's trunk. The constable had to come, take him away. Sheriff John Stone, why don't you leave me alone? Well, I feel so broke up, I wanna go home. So hoist up in the John B. sail See how they main sail set Cuff on the captain my shore Let me go home Let me go home I wanna go home I wanna go home Poor cook, he cut the fit Threw away all of my grits Then he took and he ate up all of my corn Why don't they let me go home? Well, this is the worst trip I've ever been on Hoist on the John B. sail. See how the main sail set. Couple the captain ashore. Let me go home. Let me go home. I wanna go home. Well, I feel so broke up. I wanna go home. So hoist up the John B. sail, see how the mainsail set, call for the captain ashore, let me go home, let me go home, I wanna go home, well, I feel so broke up, I wanna go No, I didn't go to run. I didn't go to run. I was there to uh, watch my son. He was, uh, there was a little playground next to the thing, and, and he was a little kid. And uh, I went there to just sit there and sit around while he played on the playground, uh, on, the, on the jungle gym and all that stuff. And, uh, and these guys were running around the track. And I, I, looked, I looked over them. Uh, they're running. So what? You know, people running around the track. What do you do? You know, so I, I took one look and looked away. And then a little while later, I, I looked again, and they were, they were running in a group, and they were all going at a good clip. And I looked once, and I looked again, because they were going so fast. They were going so fast. And they were doing, uh, they were doing, uh, I think they were doing 220s, uh, 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 220, uh, 220 rest and full 220 go. So when they got to the, the starting line, the 50-yard line there, uh, you know, there's a football field in the middle, they, they, would, they would take an easy, they had this light, bouncy, 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 they're all in this kind of a tight group, and they, they had this light, bouncy, uh, easy-going resting pace. Then they'd hit that 50, uh, the 50 uh, starting line, that 50-mile marker, and phew, take off. And they'd come around that turn, and they're going so fast, so beautiful. And they all looked, they all looked like they were seven feet tall. You know, they had this lean, lean look. And uh, so I walked over to the little fence, and I, I watched them go by. And they weren't, they weren't tall. They just looked tall because they were so lean. They were so lean. They were all muscle. They were all muscle. These, these little fellas, little guys. I mean, not pygmies, but they were little. And... Uh, I was curious, so they were take, They took a break, and I walked. I walked around to the, the gate there by the thing. And I walked up, and I was standing there like I had a question on my face. And one of them walked over to me. I looked down at him, little guy. And they were from Kenya. They were professional marathon runners. Professional marathon runners. They just they go around the world, 
and they were staying they were staying in Lexington somebody and a couple houses people who who were into, they were there for the Boston Marathon and and people who who uh, do that put them up you know so they go around the world for Kenya there was about six of them and uh, I said and the guy's playing I was very interested you know and he, and he said all that to me and I said I said, uh, I said to the guy, "You guys are very fast. You guys are very, <laughs> you guys are very fast." And he said, without any boasting, but with but with but with pride, a little happiness, and the soft, nice, sweet accent, he said, "Yes, we are." Yes, they were very very fast. And when you see. You know, these are world-class runners. When you see you see people jogging here and there, you know, or some guy on the treadmill hoo, 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 pounding away, you know, I'm so fast. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't get cocky, pal. This this is the real thing here. This is this is how good it, this is how, as good this is how good it can get. Ron. Hey, Ron Heckinger. Oh my God, you know, Ron Heckinger. Ronnie, I, I, I have a memory of, of, of paddling. There was this day you and I were in a Volkswagen. We were traveling south, looking for waves, just you and me, and the, the jetty, the south jetty, there was this peak that was never there, breaking off the south jetty at Tamarack. Do you remember? That's what I remember. Um... And we we both and there was nobody out. There was nobody there. There was never a break there. Tamarack, yeah, sure, sometimes. Uh, but the south side of, of just south of Tamarack, on the other side of the jetty, there was never a break there. Never. I don't know if it, how what it's like now, but in those days there wasn't. There just wasn't. There's a place you drive by uh, on your way to Lucadia, on your way to Beacons or Swamis. And uh, but it was it was go, as the, as the kids say, it was going off and. Uh, we went, holy cow, and, and we, we parked and paddled out and surfed the place. And it was just the two of us. Do you remember that? Because I had this, I had this memory, man, I'll never forget. You were, I was paddling out, and you were dropping in. And you, and it was, uh, the way I remember it, you know, I remember it being like 12 feet. It was probably more like 6 feet. <laughs> but it was overhead. It was overhead. And uh, I was paddling over, and I was looking at, I was looking at you. And you, you were, you, you, you drove, you drove off the bottom and got up into trim, and you got in this cool stance, and, and it was it was starting to catch up you the uh, the curl there, uh, the top of the wave, and I and I was going, oh, and, you know, and I I uh, I went over the top, and I turned around and I watched you hit your back turn, and I I uh, your cutback, you whew, I said, yeah, I saw the water go up. I never forgot that that moment, that moment. It was just such, it was a great a great moment. That was Ron Hepinger. That's you. I never forgot that, man. You made surfing look easy. A beautiful surfer, Ron Hecklinger. Jimmy Z, you rascal, you. Yeah, I get some. Jimmy, Jimmy Z blows a, he blows a mean sax, baby. He gets up there, starts honking his horn, and all the chicks start reaching for his crotch. They can't help it. He has this power. Musicians, they play different axes and wonder how they do that. I mean, a lot of a lot of musicians are are are, are multi multi in, instrumentalists. Sure, but I, I know I'm not the only one who uh uh. Oh, you you better <laughs> drive a Joe Cocker story. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I do. I got more. I got more than a few. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I miss you, Tim. I miss you, uh, Jimmy. Shit. I mean, sorry, my frosh. Yeah, man. Yeah, I got sick, didn't I? Had to, had to, had to leave the band. And Jason hasn't brought me back in yet. That bastard. I guess he likes Daramo more than me. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, 
Um, I know I'm not the only one uh, who, who looks at uh, some other instruments, because I'm, I'm, I play instruments, I mean, I kind of play guitar, and I do play bass, but if I look at a saxophone, what Jimmy Z plays, you know, it just looks like, well, I don't know what it looks like. It, it looks like um, um, it, all those valves, all those valves, you can't even see where your fingers are supposed to go. Um, it, it just, I just see, it looks, I feel like I'm looking at an engine. You know, open the hood and, and look at an engine. I don't, you know, look at a bunch of pistons. Because I don't know, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Looks like some arcane, uh, uh, magical instrument out of out of uh, some some infernal engine uh, out of Harry Potter or something. I have no idea why anybody would even want to try to play saxophone. You know what? My mother was a uh, was an excellent piano player. She was uh, plumbing. Yeah, look, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it looks like pl plumbing, <laughs> and I cannot plumb it. Uh, uh, my mother was an excellent piano player, and I started playing guitar. And I'd be, I'd be, uh, if I'd come home, I'd bring my guitar, and I'd, I'd be fiddling around on guitar. And she, she had the same feeling about any kind of. Uh, guitar, even though she used to direct choirs and, and things like that, any kind of stringed instrument besides piano, where you played it on a fretboard with the strings next to each other, held them down, really threw her, and chords and stuff, really threw her, because she was used to, her, her visualization of music was from bottom to top, left to right, linear, that was it, you know, that's the way she saw it. That's the way she perceived it. So if you're, if I'm up here doing this, you know, she, it, it used to, I could see her, I could see her doing this like a dog. I superstition. Black cat just crossed my trail. Well, I superstition. But a black cat just crossed my trail. Well, don't we build no room might get put in jail. Well, my right hand is itching. I'll get some money for sure. Well, my right hand is itching. I'll get some money for sure. But where my left eye jump? Somebody's got to go. Well, I ain't superstitious. Black cat just crossed my trail. Well, I ain't superstitious. But a black cat just crossed my trail. Well, don't sweep me with no broom. Just might get put in jail. Well, all the dogs begin to bark all over the neighborhood. Well, all the dogs begin to howl all over the neighborhood. That's a true sign of death. No good. Well, I ain't superstitious. Black cat just crossed my trail. Ah. Well, I ain't superstitious. Black cat just crossed my trail. Well, I don't sweep in a room. I just might get put in jail. Stereotyping is something that 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 uh, I think everyone agrees is something that should not be indulged in, because it, it's it's it, it kind of does an in, injustice to the to the person or the people being stereotyped. <clears throat> but something that 
but there's another thing that 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 uh, some people would rather not say, but I think realize also that there's a, there's a grain of truth in 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 stereotypes. Um, <clears throat> if you've lived long enough and been around as many times. Uh, uh, as I have been around the block as many times as I have, you 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 recognize you you come to know it. When we were when I was touring and and uh, with Joe, we were we were in Europe all the time, because he was huge in Europe. He was kind of passe here, but but there but uh, the love for Joe never never abated one uh, one iota in Europe. He was you're a star. Once you're a star, you're a star. You know, I mean the biggest place we ever played in. Uh, in, in, in the United States, this is the mid '80s. Uh, even, he was even having hits, but he wasn't young and good-looking anymore, you know. And uh, and and uh, the American public is pretty fickle. Um, and uh, the biggest venue we played was uh, the Beacon Theater. You know, it's a nice, good-sized room, but nothing like the places we played in. Uh, uh, in Europe, we played soccer stadiums in Europe, packed them, you know, big shows. Now, well, what I'm going to, the thing about stereotypes <laughs> is uh, we'd play in Germany. And every, every time we showed up at a gig, there was a guy there. We'd pull up at the, at the venue, at the stage, at the stage door, or the way in uh, toward the dressing rooms. We all get off the bus, and there was a guy there waiting for us with a clipboard, who spoke better English than we did. And goes, you know, this way, please, and uh, and I will take you to your dressing room. And he'd take us to the dressing room, and it was immaculate. Everything was laid out. A nice food table, you know, all kinds of, and a, a, a big bucket of ice with all of these drinks in it. And it, just, it was beautiful. You know, hot food and all kinds of... It's real nice. Uh, und, uh, when you are ready for sound check, I would take you, yeah, well, let's go to sound check. And so we'd, we'd follow him and go out on the stage and walk up on the stage and everything was, everything was beautiful. All the cables were taped down. All the equipment, all the back line was brand new. All the top tier, you know, clips, you know, all this top tier... Uh, 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 brand names, you know, and and then we, and then we'd go up to test the uh, the mics, and they were like, perfect. They were fine. We didn't we didn't need to do a sound check. Everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. And everything went off on time. Bang. When you know when it was time to start, we when the show when the show was to start, it started. I mean, we started on time. You know, that was Germany. Okay. And we drove over the Alps into Italy. Hey! <laughs> que cosa! <laughs> oh my God! You get used to things in Germany and then go over into in Italy. It's like, what the hell happened? Nobody knew what was going on. Everybody was in a siesta. You know, nobody... We, we'd pull up at some old decrepit uh, soccer stadium. You know, and there, there were like a hundred carabinieri standing around. These police... They'd dispatch them, you know, like they'd get overtime, and they're all just standing around, loitering, you know, smoking cigarettes. And, 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 they, and they looked at us like, who are these guys? And we had to negotiate our way through them all. Excuse me, excuse me. There's nobody there to meet us. You know, we had to go in there. Uh, the, the, you go up on the stage, everything was spaghetti all over the, all the cords would look like spaghetti all over the, all over the stage. Uh, the, the equipment was crappy. Uh, half the time it didn't work. Uh, it was just a mess. It was a mess. You know, that's Italian. I'm just saying, that's the way it was. That's the way it was. Thrill is gone. Thrill is gone away. Gone, babe. Go. 
thrown away You know you done me wrong You'll be sorry someday The thrill is gone Gone away from me On the thrill is gone Gone away from me. I will still live on. So lonely I'll be. The thrill is gone. Gone away for good. Oh, the thrill is gone. Gone away for good Someday I'll be over it all, babe Like I know a man should I'm free now I am free from your spell Free Free from your spell, and now that it's all over, babe, all I can do is wish you well. singing too he he's one of he's a rare thing he's one of those one of the, one of that rare breed known as a singing bass player because in bass playing you have to syncopate uh, whereas when you're playing guitar many times you don't like say if I was doing uh, 
Let's get it on. I'm going. I've been really trying, baby. Trying to hold back this feeling. Sound long. But if I'm playing bass, I'm doing. I've been really trying, baby. <laughs> trying to hold back this feeling so long. See, it's it's tricky. It's tricky because you got that syncopation going on in there. You know. Uh, Oh, but that's a that's a thing that that only only musicians are aware of. But the only time I ever get complimented on my singing while I, as 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 a bass player is usually by another bass player. Uh, after a set, a bass player will come up to me and say, "How the hell do you do that, man?" <laughs> it's a knack. It's a knack. You got to divide your brain. Got got you got to get one thing going until that's down. And then get the other thing going. You think that's hard. How about drumming? That's four different things going on. Or more. You know. So. Anyway. This is a singing bass player. Did this song. Wow, my low end is gone. La, 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 <clears throat> la, uh, shit. I'm gonna try it anyway. You you hear the you'll hear the note in your in your head. Love played its games on me for so long. I started to believe. Never find anyone. Doubt it tried to convince me to give in. Said you can't win. Day the sun came a shining through. The rain had stopped and the skies were blue. No, oh, what a revelation to see someone will say I love you to me. A world in a million chance of a lifetime. to fill Then I found a piece of happiness to call my own Life is worth living again For to love you to me is to live A one in a million chance of a lifetime and life showed compassion and sent to me a stroke of love called you a one in a million you Oh, 
a one in a million chance of a lifetime and life showed compassion and sent to me stroke of love call you A world in a million you One in a million sheep. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of the one about the guy who found a guy porking one of his sheep in his backyard. So he sued him, you know, and went to court. And uh, the, the guy who, who was being sued, the offender, <laughs> uh, got a lawyer who was really good at jury selection. Really good. Like the best at jury selection. So they, they got the, the plaintiff up there in the box, and they said, so, you went into your backyard, and what, what happened? What did you see? Well, I saw, I saw the defendant. He was... Uh, uh, assaulting my sheep from the rear and uh, having his way with her. Uh-huh. And then what did you see? Well, he, he, he pulled out and turned the sheep around and had the sheep perform on him orally. He filleted, filleted the man. And, and one of the jurors nudged the other one and said, the good ones will do that. Yes, you can't argue with that. I think the good ones will do that. That could be said of anybody. Well, I was thinking of another song. Poughkeepsie. Last Chance Saloon, right? 
<laughs> we op <laughs> we opened for Danny Kruger, the the the, the guitar player uh, with the, the Doors. He was playing there, and the Burnouts opened for them. Burnouts opened for them, and so we we were, there we were in that in, in, at the <laughs> at the last chance, and the audience was there, and nobody was listening. Everybody was was in their seats, and nobody was listening. They were there to see Kruger, and they didn't care because there's. Um, Try not to use language in this in this uh, uh, nice warm live stream. Uh, but uh, they were a lot of stupid people, man. You know, to to just not even care, not even not even be interested in whether or not the opening act was good. I mean, I, maybe maybe we sucked, but you know, at least at least uh, give, give us an indication that you that you know that you're that you know that you've made up your mind. There it is. They don't listen at all. And by the way, we didn't suck. Yeah, we were good. We were better than he was. That's for sure. Me and Eric Parker and Joe Beesmer. Yeah, we had a good little trio. It was, it was smoking. It was fun. It was good music. Well, <laughs> nobody was listening. So my 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 uh, my temperature is boiling. And I looked over at Eric, and he looked at me, and we were, we were both pissed off. We, were, we looked at each like these effing people. Man, oh man. So Eric, <laughs> Eric raised all his cymbals to their maximum height. I was, we were between songs, and he raised all his cymbals to, to the maximum height, and he lowered, <laughs> he lowered his drum seat to its lowest depth of despair. So uh, every time he had to crash, he had to stand up. Every t so he'd be playing, and then he'd stand up <laughs> to crash. <laughs> and it was just the he was always so yes, but he he decided he'd, he'd use the he'd use the the symbols a lot now so he's always he was going up and down like a like a damn jack in a box and man was it funny and guess what that started to get their attention hey what's he doing you know and they, they, they still didn't like it because they, they didn't get it is he being funny uh... boy oh boy huh you know what they say everybody should vote no not everybody should vote. Oh, there's something on my mind. Won't somebody please, please tell me what's wrong? You're just a fool. You know you're in love. What you say? Do when he's such a good man. And listen. 